and welcome to Crafts with Ash DIY and Decor. My name's Ashley and today I am so excited to bring you part two of my Christmas tear tray DIYs. If you did not see my part one, I will have it linked in the description box below, also to the end of this video. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell and click the drop down menu and hit all so you're notified anytime I upload a new video. All right, let's get started with these Christmas tear tray DIYs. For the first DIY, I'm going to start off with this little chalkboard easel that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. And after removing the packaging and everything, I'm just going to paint the front of it with a good coat of crimson chalk paint from Waverly. After that dries, I'm going to take my little chunky brush and I'm going to dip it in some ivory paint. And I'm just going to dry brush over the top just to kind of dull down the red. Now you're going to notice in both this video and the part one, I'm very traditional. I love the red, white, and green. So you're going to get a lot of that coming up. So next I cut off this decal from my Cricut and I'm going to go ahead and put it on my board and it says the stockings were hung. After that, I'm going to take three of these little sticker stockings that I got. They are the wooden sticker ones. They come in that sheet and I'm just adding a little bit of hot glue to the top and then adding that little snow glitter that you can get from the Dollar Tree right at the top of each one of my little stockings. After those were dry, I'm simply going to add my stockings to the bottom of that little sign by using some hot glue. I also thought that a bigger version of this for some wall art would be super cute as well. Then to accessorize my board a little bit, I'm going to take this green and white baker's twine that I just recently found and I'm going to hot glue it around the perimeter of my little sign. Now I'm not adding hot glue going all the way around, just in little areas where I need it to be adhered. Next, I decided that I really didn't like the natural wood of the easel part, so I just took a baby wipe and I dipped it in some antique Waverly wax, and I'm just going to rub that all over my little stand. And I really like how that changed the look of it. Uh, my tear tray is very rustic. It is that green, the white, and the red, but it is rustic. So I have added Waverly wax wherever I can to give it that antiqued and rustic look. Next, I took some twine, I made a little twine bow and glued it to the top left corner. And then I made another bow out of that green and white baker's twine and hot glued that on top of the twine bow and cut down my tails. And now I have this cute little, the stockings were hung easel. For my next DIY, I'm gonna start off with this little to-go cup and I purposely got the one with candy canes. And I removed the lid from the top and then I'm actually going to stuff my cup with some just leftover grocery bags. And then I'm going to add some of these styrofoam balls to kind of make the little mound up top to kind of give it that shape. After that, I'm going to take this caulk that I got from the Dollar Tree and I am just going to caulk all the way around the top and over the top of my little peppermint mocha. I loved this. I thought it was so cute. If you caught my pumpkin spice tear tray video, I also did the same thing and I made a pumpkin spice frappuccino with that. So definitely hop on over to that one and check it out. After that, I'm just using my finger to kind of spread it around and make sure that all the areas were covered how I liked and just kind of make it look more like whipped cream. Then I took that caulk one more time and just kind of did some spirals to, to give it that little whip up top.
And then again, I took my finger and I am just going to spread that around too. Next, I took these little peppermint sticks that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I took them all out of the bag except for one, and I, I put that single one in the bag, and then I'm just using just like the end of a knife or whatever you have to just bang it, a hammer, whatever, And I because I just want to make really small pieces. So I'm just basically crushing it in this little bag. And the bag helps to keep it all contained so you don't have little pieces flying everywhere. So funny story, I'm actually drinking a peppermint mocha right now from Starbucks. <laughs> Comment down below, are you a peppermint mocha fan? I want to know. Doesn't necessarily have to be from Starbucks, but just in general. After my peppermint stick was all crushed, I just went ahead and I sprinkled it all over the top of that caulk. And of course, you want to do this while the caulk is still wet. You want to work, you want to work quickly. Then I took another stick and I'm just going to stick it in the caulk, the side of the caulk, so it's sticking out. And I did cut it in half so it wasn't so long. And then I'm gonna take another stick and stick it right next to it. Now, of course, you can use a candy cane as well. That would be super cute. So now I'm just kind of taking these little pieces and spreading them out, making sure that I have these little peppermint pieces everywhere on my little peppermint mocha. Real quick, I wanna take this opportunity to welcome you to my YouTube channel. If you're new, thank you so much for choosing to stop by today. I truly hope that you love what you see and choose to stick with me for a while by subscribing to my YouTube channel. If you're returning, you already know, I love you, I appreciate you. Please keep liking, please keep commenting. I do read them all and I truly appreciate all of your love and support. All right, so then I just added another stick to the inside of my mocha. Okay, now to dress this puppy up a little bit, I'm going to take this perfect candy cane or peppermint designed ribbon and I'm going to wrap it all the way around that little rubber piece around the cup. When I make my tear trays this season, I really try to hit on every little aspect of Christmas, so peppermint mochas, the stocking, Santa, reindeer, uh, elves, just really everything. So you're gonna see a wide variety of ideas in this video and my part one as well. All right, next I found these little ornaments from the Dollar Tree and it, these were perfect. So I'm just gonna take that little candy cane one and I'm gonna hot glue it to the front of my peppermint mocha and that was it. Now you wanna let this dry overnight and you have this really fun peppermint mocha. All right, next I am gonna make a beaded garland. Now I cheated, I 100%, I cheated so hard on this DIY. But when I saw the strand of beads already put together from Walmart, I had to have it because that cut down so much work for me. I didn't have to go through and paint any beads. So I did pick this up from Walmart and I'm cutting off just a strand long enough that I want it. And that's what I'm going to use for the actual garland. Next, I took this red and white baker's twine and some regular twine and I put them together and I'm wrapping them around this sponge several times until I get the thickness that I want. We're going to go ahead and make a tassel with these. So then I went ahead and slid it off of my little sanding sponge and then I'm going to I'm going to tie the tassel on one end of my garland and I did take off some beads on the end so I had just the string hanging. You can see that there there's some beads off. So I am going to take it through and I am going to tie it to itself. So I hope this is making sense. Now this was kind of a struggle. As you can see, I had to take off more beads because it was the piece was not long enough. But then eventually I got it. And then I'm just gonna double knot that so my tassel stays on. I'm also gonna throw some hot glue on there 
just to give it extra support. All right, next I'm gonna take another piece of twine and baker's twine and I'm going to tie it to the top of my tassel to kind of give it a little head. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. Then I did wrap those strands around several times, tied them off in the back, and I'm gonna add some hot glue just to tack that down as well for extra support. Then I'm gonna take my scissors, I'm gonna cut the loop at the bottom, and then I'm gonna give it all a haircut, make sure they're all even strands. And then I'm gonna go through and trim up any extra string that's hanging out. And that's it for that side. Next, I'm going to take this elf that also came on that same pack as the candy cane, and that's what I'm going to attach to the other end of the garland. So I am simply just going to, there's already a hook, like a little um, hook on the elf. So I'm just going to put my twine through, tie it off, add some hot glue, and that's it. This was super easy to make, especially because all of the beads were already painted. So don't forget, when you go to Hobby Lobby, which by the way, their Christmas section is 50% off. When you go to Hobby Lobby or Walmart, check out their beaded garlands because you can either use them as a garland like this, you can take them off the strings and use them just as beads for different projects, but definitely don't miss out on those. And don't dismiss those. So I'm just going to work to get my little elf on there. And like I said, I am going to use some hot glue to go ahead and tack it down. Then I decided that I wanted to kind of hide where the little ring I like hook is. So I'm going to give my little elf a little bow up top just with some ribbon I already had. Cut off the tails. And that was it. That completed this super cute little garland. Perfect for my tiered tray. I love it. So this next DIY was actually one that I did in July for my Christmas in July tiered tray. So I thought I'd throw it in here because it came out super cute. So I had this little like finger blaster thing from summer, but you could also use a dowel or like cut off a little part of a plunger stick. So I'm just going to measure it on this peppermint paper just so I have enough to wrap around it. So I'm just going to cut off that little rectangle and then by using some hot glue, I'm just going to go ahead and glue the paper over that little foam piece. So I am adding hot glue as I go and as I roll it in there. And I definitely made sure that the ends were stuck down really well too. Now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just simply going to trim off the paper that's hanging over. That way it stands up nicely. And then I'm just going to sand it so it's a nice clean cut. And I'm going to do that on both ends. Next, I'm gonna take this little styrofoam ball that I got in a pack from the Dollar Tree, and I'm simply going to hot glue it to one of the ends of my little pole. I bet you can guess what we're making. All right, next I'm gonna take this little dowel rod, and I am gonna cut it down a little bit because it was long and you're going to see I'm going to end up cutting it down again. But first I'm going to go ahead and paint it with some white chalk paint. Then 
So after that dried, I need to stick this little dowel rod into my pole. So I just used my scissors to create a little hole. Then I went ahead and stuck my dowel rod in, and I did secure it with some hot glue. Now I'm going to take this little chalkboard tag, and I cut it down so it's proportional, and now I'm going to cut down that dowel rod again because I realized it still was just a little long. So on my chalkboard tag, now you can handwrite it, you could do whatever you'd like. This was before I got my Cricut, so I used these stickers and I'm just simply going to spell out North Pole. Next, I'm gonna take this little chalkboard marker or chalk marker and I'm just going to make some little doodles on the perimeter of this little sign. Next I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm just going to put a coat over my little chalkboard tag to seal it all down. Then I'm going to take my Crapodile and poke two holes. If you see random things popping up on the screen, it's because I'm screen recording from YouTube. And of course the ads are popping up and little things like that. So I apologize. <laughs> All right. So next I'm going to take this Baker's Twine and this is what I'm going to use to attach the sign to that dowel rod. So I'm just going to put those strings through the little holes and then I'm just going to simply tie them onto the dowel rod. Once I had my sign attached to my dowel rod, I'm going to take this small little sparkly red ball and hot glue it to the other end of the dowel rod just to give it a fun and festive touch. Next, I had this little stand left over from something I bought, I think, and pulled off. So I'm just going to paint it black. And then after that's dry, I'm going to go ahead and hot glue my my pole to the middle of the stand and now I have the cutest little North Pole sign. Look how cute. All right, for my next DIY, of course, we have to have the little rolling pins. So what I did was cut down two plunger sticks and these are five inches long. So I'm going to go ahead and paint both of these little rods with some white chalk paint. And I am going to just paint one end of it because I don't need to paint the entire thing. So after that, after the paint's dry, I'm going to take these little sticker mark stickers and I'm going to spell out bright on one of my rolling pins and Mary on the other. Now, as you can see, I'm putting the word all the way to the right side of my rolling pin. And I only painted the white big enough that the word can go on. But like I said, I did not paint the entire thing. You don't really need to. All right, so once I had all my letters down, I went ahead and painted the rest of the darker one with the white chalk paint because I kind of thought if I had put the green over it, it there is gonna be a noticeable difference. So while that other one was drying, I got my bright rolling pin and I'm going to give that a coat of crimson chalk paint. Then I took the Mary rolling pin and I'm going to give that two to three coats of this Christmas green apple peril acrylic paint. Then of course, once it's all dry, I'm going to take off my stickers. Now the red one, those came out really nice. It came out crisp, it came out clean. 
The green one did have a little bit of bleeding and I'm not sure if that's because of the wood I was using. It was not a plunger stick. It was just something my dad gave me that he had left over. So I don't know if that was a difference. So it's, it's a little messy, but that's okay. Okay, so next I'm going to take a stick from a foam brush and I cut those down into four inch pieces. Or I'm sorry, one inch pieces. <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to glue one to either end of my rolling pin. Then I'm going to paint the bright <laughs> rolling pin, the red one. I'm going to paint those little ends with green paint, and then vice versa, I'm going to paint the merry rolling pin with red paint. I hope this is all making sense, but you can see what I'm doing here. So again, I cut that foam brush handle down to one inch pieces. Then to dress up my little rolling pins a little bit, I'm going to tie, tie some of this red and white baker's twine to the green one. And then I'm going to take some of this burlap ribbon and it's green so I thought it was perfect and I'm going to tie that onto the other one and then I just tied a little red and white twine bow to that and I thought these rolling pins came out so cute. For the next DIY I'm going to take this little wood plank that I got from the Dollar Tree and I, it was a little rough so I did go ahead and sand it down and then I'm going to paint the entire thing with crimson red Waverly chalk paint. This is your friendly reminder to give this video a thumbs up. Not only does it really help my channel to grow, but it tells YouTube you love what you see and you want to see more. So smash that like button. After my red paint was dry, I did the same thing I did on that first DIY and I'm just going to dry brush some ivory chalk paint all over my sign, but I am going to go a little heavier with the chalk paint, the ivory. And I am paying attention to the corners because I wanted to highlight those too. So you can see it is a little heavier. Now I found this decal in Cricut Access and I thought it was so funny. It says, I just want to bake stuff and watch Christmas movies. Now here's the funny part. I actually don't bake or cook at all, but Christmas movies are my jam. So I love Hallmark. I love Lifetime. So anything that involves Christmas movies, I'm in. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this decal down on my little uh, wood piece here. If you don't have a Cricut, that's okay. You can use rub-on transfers. You can use stickers. You can handwrite this. You can print something off from Google and just print it off on your printer and Mod Podge it on. There's so many different alternatives to having a cutting machine. So don't think that just because you don't have a cutting machine, you can't make this. There are so many other ways you can cr achieve this look. So after my decal was on, I'm going to go ahead and go around the perimeter with that red and white baker's twine. And it does say I just want to bake stuff. You just can't see it. <laughs> there you go. Now you can see it. It was just the lighting. So like I said, I'm just going to go all the way around. And you can see that I actually put my decal toward the top of that wood plank. And I did that on purpose because we are going to add something super cute to the bottom. So last year after Christmas, I went to Walmart and got these little mini cookie cutter ornaments. And I thought that these were so cute. And of course, I got them on sale. So I'm going to take two of those little cookie cutters and I'm simply just going to hot glue them to the bottom. Now, first I did use only hot glue, but then, you know, metal and hot glue don't get along. So I did have to go ahead and go in with super glue to help them adhere better. So now to make a stand, I'm just going to hot glue two tumbling tower blocks together. Then I'm going to paint that red so it blends in with my actual sign. And then I'm going to hot glue my little stand to the back of my, my sign. 
I, oh, that's right. I did go over it with that white or ivory chalk paint as well. But I, this is another one that I think would be super cute as like a big sign too to hang on your wall or to display. But how fun is this little sign? So fun. Moving right along into our next DIY. And I saw this little, I don't know, ceramic piece or glass piece. I don't know what it's supposed to be, but to me it looked like a tree. So the first thing I did was give it a good coat of moss chalk paint from Waverly. Then I didn't really like the color, but I did want to use that chalk paint because it would take less coats than painting it with acrylic. So after the moss paint dried, I went over it with that Christmas green apple barrel paint. After all of that was completely dry, and I did do a few coats, I'm going to take this pit berry little garland and I'm going to start at the top and I'm just going to wind it around my little tree. And I am hot gluing it as I go, but I do have to hold it there for several seconds so that way it adheres. So I'm just going to wrap it all the way down. Now the easiest thing I found out was to actually hot glue it where there's some berries. So you see, as you can see, I'm putting the hot glue where there's berries. So it actually has something to adhere to as opposed to like the garland, the vine part. So I'm just adding hot glue in random spots wherever I feel that it needs. And I'm going to go all the way around. I found this little thing like in the candle section, so I'm not exactly sure what this thing is. <laughs> Alright, so then some of my berries fell off, so I just um, cut them down a little bit and then just hot glued those on to the end. Next, I had this little gold glitter star that I got off a little wood pack. So I'm just going to simply hot glue that to the top of my little tree. And that was it to this little DIY. It was super simple, super, super easy to make. And I had all things already in my stash. Okay, so you know we have to do the gnome. So I'm not like a freak for gnomes. <laughs> like I'm not like a huge gnome person. But anytime on a tear tray, I just think they're so cute because they're so small. So they're the perfect size. So we're going to make this little guy look like Santa. So what I did was I painted his hat, his shirt, or his coat, and his pants in some crimson chalk paint. And now I'm just going to go through with some black acrylic paint, and I'm going to paint his boots and then his belt. So I'm just cleaning him up a little bit, his little paint job. <laughs> I did have to use a really small detail brush to get into all the little spots. Okay, now we're going to add some fluff to him. So I'm just taking cotton balls and I'm pulling off little pieces. And I'm going to hot glue a part of the cotton ball to the bottom of his little hat. And I'm going to hot glue that all around. Now you can see that I'm just kind of pulling little pieces off. I'm rubbing it, making it kind of flatter and longer, if that makes sense. And then I'm just hot gluing it down all the way around my hat. Then I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to add some cotton around the little cuffs of his little sleeves. And this I'm doing really, really skinny pieces or thin pieces. And I'm going to add that to both one, both of his cuffs of his sleeve. <laughs> Thank you. 
Next, I'm going to add this little poof ball to the top of his hat. And then I'm going to go through and uh, kind of touch up his skin a little bit. So I'm just taking some skin tone uh, paint and I'm just going to go over. And his eyes were kind of wonky, the ones that were painted. So I do go back and draw those back in. But he looks a little possessed. For some reason, I just could not get him right. But you'll see. <laughs> Then I'm just taking some white chalk paint and I'm going to go over his beard because it was kind of dirty. All right, now here's where I attempt to do his eyes. So I'm taking the bat, the end of a paintbrush and I'm just making the two black eyes. And then I actually took the tip of a pencil to make the little white parts. And I don't know, it still kind of looked possessed, but even so, I thought he looked really cute. Okay, so for the next DIY... This was actually one that I did in July too, so I thought I would add this in. I'm going to take this little floral charm, I guess that's what they were calling it. And at first I started painting it with white chalk paint, but then I decided I want to fill that hole. So I'm just taking some lightweight spackling and I'm just going to put that in the hole to fill it. And then I'm going to continue painting this with two coats of the white Waverly chalk paint. After that was dry, I'm going to take this music note scrap or music sheet scrapbook paper. I'm going to trace that circle on there. I'm going to cut it out. And then by using Mod Podge, I'm going to adhere that circle to the front of my little disc. Now, I did want to pay attention to the edges because I really needed that to be adhered down. Then I'm going to take my sanding block and I'm going to sand in the down direction to give me that nice clean cut. So now I'm just going to go through and peel off any of the uh, paper that was left over. That way it's nice and smooth. After that I'm going to take this little garland that I actually picked up from Hobby Lobby. And it was a little too big. It already came in a, in a round shape, but it was too big. So I'm just going to size it down a little bit and make it a little bit smaller so it fit on the inside of that little disc. And I'm just wrapping it around itself, basically. And then I'm going to go ahead and hot glue that to the middle of that little circle. Next, I'm going to take this little pit berry garland and I'm going to cut off some of the pit berries and just randomly glue them all the way around my little wreath. After that, I guess I lost some footage, but I did end up hot gluing some little leaves and pine cones to the top. And now I'm going to take make a little red bow with some of this little red ribbon. And I'm just making a very simple bow. I'm not a very good bow maker. So all my bows are literally just like tying a shoe. <laughs> so <laughs> you're not going to get creative bow making on this channel. <laughs> But if you do want a really good bow tutorial, Olivia's Romantic Home, she is the queen of making beautiful bows. So I'd highly recommend you check her out. And then I'm just going to hot glue my bow and my pine cones and my little pine pieces to the top of that little wreath. And I thought this came out so festive and so cute. And then I'm just going to cut off my tails. Okay, so I wanted this whole thing to look like an ornament, but it's not actually going to be an ornament, if that makes sense. So I had this little bell left over from something that I got around the 4th of July at the Dollar Tree. And it was like a, on a wind chime. So right now I'm just working to get that little piece out of the middle. 
And then I'm going to use super glue and hot glue to adhere my bell to the top of my little ornament. Now, again, this is just an ornament decor piece. I'm not actually going to hang this. So this is kind of, this bell part is kind of going to act like the hanger or like that little silver part that would be around an ornament. I hope that makes sense. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and take off that chain that came with it, and I'm going to replace it with a piece of twine, and that's gonna act like our hanger and our little piece. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna take my little chippy brush, and I'm going to dip it in some Waverly Antique Wax, and then I'm just gonna go around the edges just to make it look a little bit more rustic. Then I also dipped it in some ivory paint and went over the bell as well. And then here is where I'm gonna go ahead and loop through the piece of twine. And there was already a loop at the top, as you can see, so I'm just gonna put it right through that little hole. Then I'm just gonna tie a knot and then move my string so the knot is at the bottom. Now, I did want this little uh, ornament to stand because like I said this is just a ornament decor piece to represent ornaments on a tree on my tiered tray I hope this is all making sense <laughs> so I just took these little blocks and I hot glued two of them together and then I'm going to hot glue that to the back and I wanted this to kind of be on an angle so then I'm gonna hot glue one next to it and that made the perfect little stand for my ornament decor piece Okay, so now this one's super easy. We're just gonna take this little sleigh for this last DIY and we're just gonna improve it a little bit. So I got this little sleigh from uh, the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna go ahead and take off the, gr the greenery on there. The pine cone was like plastic and it was obvious that it was fake and kind of just cheapo looking. So it it is wired on there, so I just took it off. And I'm actually going to paint this entire thing with crimson chalk paint. And now I know what you're going to say, Ashley, it's already red. It is red, but it's a bright red. So I kind of wanted to tone it down just a little bit and have the reds match my tiered tray. After my little sleigh was dry, I'm going to take this other pine cone that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to still use the same pine needles and the bow. So I'm going to go ahead and hot glue the pine needles back on. And then I'm going to hot glue that other pine cone onto the side. And then I'm going to hot glue the bow. So I am reusing a lot of it. And like I said, this is just going to get an upgrade. And I actually thought that this would be a really cute tea light candle holder. So that's actually what I made it. So I'm just going to glue all my pieces back on. Next, I'm going to take my makeup sponge and some white paint. And I'm going to go around the edges to kind of give it that snowy effect. And I'm also going to add some to the pine needles as well. And I really think that this is what brought it all together and made it look so, like, high-end and cute. And I did make sure to get the little, the bottoms too, so it looked like it went through the snow. It's amazing what paint can do because I just think that this just brought it up a notch. And I really loved how this little sleigh turned out. And like I said, I'm going to stick a little tea light candle in it, which you'll see in just a little bit at the end of this video. I love how this came out. All right, now it's time for our last DIY and I left the most important for the end. So I'm going to take this little shadow box and I went ahead and took off the leaf and I'm going to pop the back out. And then I'm going to paint this with one coat of Waverly chalk paint in white. Now, it doesn't have to be completely covered. I'm just trying to dull down the print on the bottom. So as that was drying, I am going to take this printable that I just printed off from my laptop. And I just Googled Oh Holy Night sheet music and I sized it down to fit in my little frame. So now I'm gonna cut it out, but I am gonna leave a little border around the sheet music. 
Now, do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> what I should have done was just put that frame around it and traced it and then just cut it off and I could have skipped some steps, but I didn't. I just took the hard road. <laughs> so now I'm just positioning it so it's even and it's in the center and then I'm just kind of creasing it so I know where to cut it down. So like I said, if you just trace the frame, you wouldn't have to go through all that. But I guess I just wasn't thinking. <laughs> so now I'm just going to go ahead and cut it down to size. Next, I'm going to take a little sponge. I'm going to dip it in some water and then in my Waverly Antique Wax. And I'm just going to brush it all over my sheet music. I'm trying to make this look really rustic and really old and antique. So I start off light at first and then I get a little darker as I, as I feel like that's how I like it. So I'm just going to really rustic this up, <laughs> dirty it up. After that, I'm going to cr crunch it all up. I'm going to crinkle it. Then I'm going to put a layer of Mod Podge on the board. And then I'm going to put my sheet music right on my board. Now the great thing is, is you don't have to worry about wrinkles on this because it's already wrinkled <laughs> on purpose. Next, I'm going to go ahead and glue the back back into my frame just by using some hot glue. After that, I cut off this nativity scene from my Cricut and I printed it on, or I cut it off on cardstock. So I'm just gonna take that off my mat carefully and then I'm going to hot glue it to the bottom of my frame so it's on the front of my frame. So it's kind of 3D. And I'm just gonna use some hot glue. I'm just putting a little dab then on each side too. Then I'm going to top it off with this gold glitter star because you have to have the star, right? And I thought that this was the perfect little DIY to complete my tiered tray display for Christmas because after all, Jesus is the reason for the season. All right, now it's time for the final reveal. What do you think? Christmas memories I've been working so much lately I can barely find the time to sleep Yeah, I spend my time running around Keeping people pleased But this is my favorite all of these DIYs, in my opinion, came out super fun and super festive. They're definitely traditional, and like I stated in my last video and in this video, I really tried to pick on all aspects of Christmas, and I think I did a good job with that and just trying to bring Christmas all together in my tiered tray. You're going to have to let me know down in the comments, what do you think of all of these DIYs? Which one is your favorite? Are you going to create some Christmas tear tray DIYs? Also, don't forget to check out my part one Christmas tear tray video. I will have it linked in my description box below and to the end of this video. As you can see, my DIYs are not arranged on my tier tray just yet. You're gonna have to stay tuned for that video coming up at the beginning of next month as I decorate my home for Christmas. I wanna thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. And please, if you'd be so kind, give this video a thumbs up because like I said, it really helps my channel to grow. Well, until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye!